Today we're going to talk about how to install the Raspberry Pi CM4 with eMMC on the Big Tree Tech Manta M8P. So there's a couple things I want to point out real quick. First of all, we have the CB1, the CM4, and the CM4. But there's two different CM4s. I'm using the one with eMMC for this tutorial. And it has about 8 gigabits of onboard memory. So we don't need to use an SD card for this configuration. The other uh, prerequisite for this is that you have the firmware for Clipper pre-installed. And if you haven't seen my previous tutorials, there'll be a link to the playlist in the description. So in order to install this, we have to connect the actual ports to the bottom right here. So to do that, on the bottom side of this card, there's actually ports that it connects to. Now, you also have to keep in mind that the Wi-Fi needs to point towards the bottom of the board and align the holes over each one of the holes that you see. So then you're going to apply pressure to one side, then the other to clip it in. Now that's installed. The other thing we have to do for eMMC is we need to know what the dip switch settings are and we have to enable the actual USB power. So I'm going to enable the USB power and then we're going to go to the manual and we're going to figure out how to do this. So let's go over to the computer now. And on the computer when I bring it up, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, what we have here is the manual. I'm going to do a control F. And you can see that it says EMMC. Then I'm going to click here to bring us to the actual entry. So the first thing they talk about right here is that you need to actually go to this link and download the RPI boot.exe or setup.exe, pardon me and that'll allow you to actually communicate with the board. The other thing they're talking about is that you need to move the dip switches for the number four, which is down here, and the number three, which is also down here. So I'll show you how to do that in a second, but I wanna first show you up here that what we're gonna be using actually is gonna be mainsail for the actual install. And I'm gonna use the 64-bit version that's down here so what you're going to do is you're going to find this one and download it. And all you have to do is click to download and it'll show up in your downloads folder. The other thing I wanted to show you is where to find the manual. So if you click on repositories and you type Manta, you'll find the M8P right here. That'll be downloaded as an actual zip when you click right here. And then when you go over to your downloads folder, what you'll see here is this. You'll right click on it and you'll extract it as you need it. Inside here, you'll actually find the manual right here. So now that you know that, this is pre-downloaded for main sales so that we can simplify the timing of this. So let's go back over to the actual board and set up the remainder of this. So I'm going to move over these dip switches for three and four. So those are now both in the correct position. And we're going to connect the USB to it in just a second. And you'll hear a beep, at which point I have to go over to the desktop and actually enable it. So on the actual computer, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the RPI boot, which I have right here, and we're going to click on it. This will come up, and you'll see that it's running a binary to set it up. What will then happen, if this is successful, is you'll see a drive. So if we click over here, you can see now there's a D drive. So now that we've got all those things in place, we'll go over to Raspberry Pi Imager. 
we'll choose the OS, use custom, it'll be in the downloads folder for the 64-bit version, we'll select open, we'll choose storage, this will be your eMMC drive, and then we'll click right, and then we'll say yes, and this will take several minutes to actually take place, probably about 10-15 minutes to do the writing, then it will do verify, so what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm going to pause the video so that uh, we can keep the uh, tutorial somewhat short. Okay, now it's almost completed verifying. So what we're going to do is wait for the message to say that it's verified. Then we'll minimize this. Let's go over to the actual drive and see if it's still there. It is not. So what we're going to have to do is actually go over to the desktop for a moment. We're going to have to remove the USB, plug it back in, go back over to the computer, and rerun the actual RPI boot. And uh, this should take a second to actually bring up the drive, which is, hang on. It didn't work this time. So what we're gonna have to do is go back over to the desktop for a second, remove the drive again, or excuse me, the USB, plug it back in, go back over to the computer, rerun it again. This might take a couple of tries. Sometimes it doesn't show up. And now it's here. So let's click on the boot drive. And as you can see, there's a file down here called WPA underscore supplicant dot config dot example. We have to rename this file. So we're going to take off the example part and press enter, then enter again. Then we're going to right click. We're going to go to notepad plus plus and we're going to put in the router name that we're using for Wi-Fi and the password. So I'm going to do this off screen so that you don't see my router name and password and then we'll reboot it. Okay, now that I've actually changed it and saved it, we got to go back over to the desktop and I'll show you what we're going to do. So we're going to remove the drive right here for the USB. It's not the drive, but the USB. We need to then switch back these jumpers for three and four. Then we're going to remove this and we're going to add the antenna. So the antenna is so that we can communicate with the Wi-Fi. So it's got a little cup on the bottom and that's going to connect right here. So now that is attached, we'll be able to actually hear the network. And what we're going to do now is actually power the device. So let me plug this in. This is probably going to take 30 to 40 seconds to boot, if not a little bit longer. Because it has eMMC, it's going to be slightly quicker. So let's go over to the computer in a moment and see what it looks like. So over on the computer, before we actually go there, I'm going to do something real quick here. I'm going to show you that the Clipper firmware is in here, but they misnamed it. It's firmware.bin is what it should read. But we're going to copy a default config. I'm just going to click the copy raw. Now, what we're going to have to do is look at the actual router. So I'm going to blur out part of this so you can't see my router settings. So on the router, I'm going to click refresh and we're going to see if it exists. Now I'm pretty sure it will. There it is. So I'm going to highlight the 192.168.1.4 and I'm going to open a web page for that. And essentially what we're going to do is we're connecting to mainsail. There's going to be issues now. So I'm going to show you how to address those. First it says there's no printer.config. So we have to take care of that. So we're going to go to machine. We're going to go to the create a file. We're going to call that printer.cfg. And then we're going to say create. Then we're going to click on that file and we're going to control V what we just copied from the Marlin 
website. One of the things I like to do in here though is I like to copy this. So I'm going to do a control X and I'm going to paste it up here. Reason being is that way you'll know. So this is going to be the next issue. So we're going to save and restart and you'll see that there's going to be another issue where it doesn't know what the MCU is. So it doesn't know what to connect to. So we're going to have to go over to TerraTerm. Now the address is 192.168.1.4. So we'll go to TerraTerm. We'll do connect, new connection. We'll change this to .4 for the last one. It's going to be on SSH, which is secure shell, and it's port 22. So we'll click OK. Then we'll say continue. Now the username is pi, and the password is rasp. Very, and that'll bring us in. So now that we're in here, we're going to have to go back over to the web page for Clipper. We're going to go to installation config install. We're going to scroll down and we have to find a particular command, which is this one right here, which will give us a listing of the device serials that we have. So we'll go to TerraTerm now. We'll right click to paste, hit enter, and that is our serial port. So I'm going to copy this by right clicking. Now this is just pasting it automatically in TerraTerm. That's okay. We're just seeing that we get it into the buffer. So we'll go back over to the browser, go over to here, click on machine, then printer config. And I'm going to type it just below so you can see what's going on. So serial colon and then control V and that's why it's not working so this one we can comment out by doing a control forward slash we'll do a save and restart and then we'll see the next issue so if we go over to here now there's an issue with the actual commands that just showed up for ADC ADC is actually your thermistor so I'll show you how to fix that on the desktop real quick so over on the desktop I'm not going to power it down, but I'm going to carefully put these in. There's a actual port for both of the thermistors down in here. And let me show you where those are real quick. If we go over to here and we were to go to back to Manta hardware pinouts down in here, you can see that we have thermal bed and thermal hot end zero. These two need to have something in them. So let's go back over to the desk and I'm going to do this very carefully. So I'm going to plug in this one and I'm going to plug in this one. Normally you'll do this with the power off for safety. And essentially what that is, is the thermistor that I've mocked out instead of being connected to your devices is going to be in there. So let's go back over to the desktop. We'll go over to Clipper again. And what we'll do is we'll open up this file for a second and then we'll save and restart. It's going to have another issue, which we'll take care of. So the ADC message is gone, but now it's missing all of this. So the quick fix is this. Go to main sale, find the virtual drive, basically scroll down until right here and then control C to copy. Then hit the X up here, go to printer config, and then control V to paste. Then do save and restart. And what you'll see is it should come online. And so to test this, let me show you this real quick. So if we have the actual camera and you're looking at the thermistors up here, there's two of them. I'm going to pick up one so you can see what's occurring and put my finger on it. So I'm going to put my fingers around this. Now watch the actual display for heat. You see how it's spiking up? That's the heat in my finger. So that's what I'm doing with the thermistor to verify it. So the last thing I want to show you is that on the actual console, you can do commands in here. There's a couple other things I want to show you such as this. You're going to probably freak out when you see this because these are all invalid. 
if you click on one of these two they won't work at least I've tried to so what I do is I click the check for updates up here this will take care of the actual finding of what needs to be updated and then you can click to update so this may take a few moments to do while that's occurring I'd like to thank my patrons as well as the people on PayPal and also Big Tree Tech for providing the actual Manta M8 P and also the CB1 mini computer for the board. The other parts are mine. So this will now say that you can update these and I will place a thank you in the end for the patrons and the people on PayPal. So let me show you one of these real quick. If you click update, this will take care of the actual update that you need to do. And for those that don't know, there's also an actual, uh, see, you can see that's up to date, Discord where you can actually have a conversation with other people that have experience in that. And I'll put this in the description of the actual tutorial. There's also a playlist in the description of the tutorial where I talk about different aspects of the board. So everyone take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you later.